And then I would ask them also if they know what pH stands for. Not very often do I get a student who actually knows what uh, the P and the H stands for in pH. pH stands for potential hydrogen, and we talk about that in terms of the chemistry. We reinforce the numbers, what they mean, so as we do our experiment, they will be having that on their mind because our experiment's gonna deal with pH. Then we go into talking about, uh, well, what does that mean for farming? What does that mean for gardeners? What does that mean for people who utilize the soil? I had, uh, with permission, borrowed this map about three years ago uh, from a professor at OSU. And this is actually real-time data, and we talk about that in class. This is the average pH values of the counties in our state. They actually did this as a, a research position there at OSU. Uh, in the agronomy department. This is the map that they came out with. My kids that have a little experience will talk about they've seen different colors of soil or they know someone who maybe lives out here in the panhandle or in far west Oklahoma versus where we live. So we're up here. So Oklahoma overall has a lot of acidic soil. And another thing we got to keep in mind, and we discuss this too, because I like to talk about research in my class, is we discuss that these are actual numbers, but they're also from not everyone in that county. So while it gives us a snapshot of what pH values are across our state, it's not going to be all inclusive because it would have been... Um, more of a, yes, I will volunteer to take a soil sample and test and send you my numbers. And so we talk about how re real research works and how it can be limiting or how, how it can represent what we're looking at. So the next table takes us to another research uh, paper that I had pulled this from. So what's really interesting about this is I began to look at this for the first time as my husband and I talk a lot at night when I'm into my chemistry class because I'm always wanting to know what's the real application of what I'm teaching in my class. And in turn, I've learned that he knows what application to use, but he doesn't know the chemistry. And so we have a lot of deep discussions at our house, but we grow a wheat, corn, uh, alfalfa, soybeans, and of course we have cattle. But this is some relative average yields of bushels per acre based on pH values. So I thought this was very uh, applicable to what we're doing. If you look at alfalfa, let's look at 5.7 pH and alfalfa. This is your yield, the 40, about 42. If it was a pH of a little bit higher, look at the jump in what could be possibly grown course, we're also looking at other factors, but as we know experimentally, and we talk about this, that even though this was a number here, it could vary, and also you've got to have all your other environmental factors going as well, such as rain and, and sun and all that balance. So we're assuming uh, some of those that are all balanced, that if you can grow only 42 in a pH of 5.7, what would it look like at a 6.8? So let's also look at our wheat. We have an 89 bushel average at a 5.7, but if we jumped it up two, so looking at those two, which is two crops that we grow and we rotate our crops, those two would definitely both be able to be grown one after the other as we're rotating because of look at the pH. And then we talk about actual sending in your, your um, soil samples. And we do that at our house. We do that every year. We pull samples from our uh, fields and look at all the different things, not just pH. But that gives you an idea of what's going on in your field so you can make some intelligent decisions on you know, how to grow what crop after another, what works best, uh, what doesn't work, and this is not all inclusive, but this gives you an idea of something you can talk about to your kids, that if you've got really low acid soil over here, you're not going to get very much corn, and we don't grow barley, but uh, that wouldn't work either. That sure wouldn't work if we tried to grow alfalfa in a field with a 4.7 pH. So all of these factors come into play, and we get to discuss that.